Welcome to beautiful Central Oregon. We are at the Sun River Resort, uh, about 30 miles south of Bend and about three hours southeast of Portland. And it is a balmy 19 degrees <laughs> at about nine o'clock in the morning. Cool, look at our little patio. That's awesome. Except we get dripped on. <laughs> We're on the bottom floor and there was snow. Ooh, no, this one's locked. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Just view of the golf course. That's funny. People are on the golf course, but not playing golf <laughs> because they're closed for the winter. What are you going to do? Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Go ahead. Oh, oh dude, missed. you missed me. <laughs> you missed me from a foot away? I was trying to like not hit you in the face. You, well, don't hit me in the I face. I was trying to hit the GoPro. Well, don't do that. Okay, go ahead. It's waterproof. No, I know, but I don't want to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if any of you are pilots and you want to fly to Sun River Resort, they actually have an airport here. Heard uh, also some nice folks told us that there's a porcupine up in a tree. So hopefully we'll be able to get a shot of a porcupine, which I don't know that I've seen. So uh, yeah. it'd be pretty neat. So we found the porcupine, uh, which I don't think I've ever seen a porcupine before, maybe in a zoo. Uh, but unfortunately he's stuck up in a tree and we could see him, but um, I don't think we're going to be able to see him with these cameras. I'll try to pull out my camera with a little bit longer lens, but it'd be neat if he'd move around, maybe we'll throw something at him. <laughs> Just kidding. We're not going to throw anything at the porcupine. <laughs> Probably chase us down and oh. attack us, but... It's funny because he looks so soft. Yeah, why don't you go pet him? No. We're now at the nature center that they have here in Sun River. Uh, beautiful paths, beautiful benches and stuff to sit in. Uh, so just a really nice little place. Of course, because of COVID, the uh, nature center is not open, so you can't walk in there and see what they've got in there. But uh, we'll have to check that out next time. So it says, we recently welcomed a new female trumpeter swan. The swan, who does not have a name yet, will soon be released on Lake Aspen, where she will form a pair bond with Gus, the male swan. So that's who we saw back there, is Gus. This female swan is currently being held in this aviary for a week-long quarantine as she acclimates to her new environment and we monitor her health. Huh. Pretty cool. Yeah, she's Please definitely quietly and help us minimize the stress. She's speak not liking in, it. Speak in a low voice. Keep dogs out of sight. Do not make noises at the swan or try to get her attention. Oh, poor guy, you're not having fun in there, are you? So within this awesome nature park, they've got all these really nice benches um, dedicated to to folks that have since passed. Um, which is too bad, sad. Uh, but they've got this cool little uh, box here. Looks like a birdhouse. And inside it, they got books. So just out here in the middle of nowhere, you can pop this open and find yourself a book to read. Just sit on the bench. And then here's the view that you would get. Hey, they got the Hobbit in there. Awesome. Okay, I'm all about that. So you would take that book. Here, Kim, I'm going to give you a book. <laughs> We're going to let you read the Hobbit because it's great. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and sit on this bench here. And then this is the view that you get while you read your book. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like this? I think I can handle this. Yeah? yeah? Seems like a nice place to read a book. Yeah. On a hot sunny day, you got the tree cover. So one of the real awesome things about um, Central Oregon is the, um, you, just, you get very little light pollution uh, in this area. And so this is an observatory here in uh, the brewery that we were at, Worthy, uh, last night actually has an observatory at the brewery which is really cool. And so they've got a bunch of benches and stuff around here where you can come out at night. And this just must be an area where you just don't get any light and the stars out here are amazing. All right, so after our, I don't know, 10 hour tour, man, we went for a long hike. It's been probably uh, three miles or so total. And um, we're hoping to come out in this little village area, which we did. And so the nice thing about this um, resort too, 
is they do have restaurants, stores, places rent gear. Like I said, so much outdoor stuff here that people have places they want to rent gear, bikes, kayaks, things like that. And um, we've got a brewery here, Sun River, which is great. Um, right, not open nice due to, to COVID. Have, oh, sorry, yeah. I was to say, it's nice to have all this because you're you know, half an hour from Bend and probably another 20 minutes from La Pine, so your cities are quite a ways away. So you're, everything you need is here. At yeah, the New Village though. This has been a pleasant surprise. We didn't have any idea that this village was as big as it is. Um, if you've ever been to, I don't know, like Whistler um, up in Canada, that village up there is awesome. Uh, but this has got a lot of similarities. It's pretty big and a lot of restaurants, like we said, and um, it's just a lot of neat places to stores and stuff to go hang out and do whatever. So, pretty neat. All right, seen a few coffee shops, a little bakery. All right. Now, if anybody's up for a game of tennis, Here's your tennis courts. And then they also have a nice sand volleyball court. Not really much sand though. Play volleyball in the snow. Snow volleyball. Yeah, snow volleyball. And snow tennis. Not sure how good your ball would bounce out there. With no nets. They have um, sleigh rides in the winter. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to see it very well. Maybe we'll be able to get a better shot before we leave here tomorrow. But um, $185 a ride if you have a group or family of four or whatever. Uh, still pretty spendy and it's it'd be pretty neat if uh, they had more snow on the ground But right now it just kind of goes through the golf course um, On the car path it takes around and if it was uh, a lot of snow out here or closer to Christmas it, It'd probably be really awesome, but Kim said it's booked. Mm -hmm. can't even get in it uh, today or tomorrow You know, which is kind of surprising uh, given that there's really no snow, but still a pretty neat little uh, adventure If you're looking for something to do, I think they also have uh, certain times of the year you can um, go on horseback rides Actually, I know they have those um, more in the summertime, I'm sure. And then uh, kayak tours or, or stand up paddle boarding, things of that nature. So definitely a lot of activities here. All right, so we're out traveling around uh, Mount Bachelor, which is the ski resort out here. And um, absolutely beautiful. It's funny, it's got down to 32 degrees, um, started to snow, come back around the mountain, sun's out, uh, beautiful with all the snow and stuff and the red uh, clay and stuff that they use on the streets for the um, sand or whatever is, it? is that what they use the sand salt or whatever um, but it's just awesome through here you got just snow park after snow park after snow park people are out snowmobiling sledding uh, snow you know snowboarding cross-country skiing uh, so much stuff to do in the winter for these guys um, and unfortunately for us being in Portland Kim and I were talking about you know we we just kind of deal with rain and uh, we can go out and you know, maybe do some hiking and what have you but you know to get to the mountain for us it's a good you know couple hour drive and um, it's so busy because you know you're dealing with all of the population of Portland and what have the surrounding area going in um, and it's it's almost impossible to even go up there anymore on the weekend so it's pretty cool out here people are out jeeping uh, just doing all kinds of neat stuff uh, to get through uh, the winter and just a lot of fun things that they can do so and more pine trees than you can ever yeah, it's just beautiful. All right, so we are now in downtown Bend. Uh, this is the area here where all their shops and restaurants and bars and stuff are. So really cool little place to come and uh, eat and hang out.
All right, so welcome to the Old Mill District. This is another shopping center area that uh, they have in downtown Bend. A really nice, uh, trendy place. Again, a lot of restaurants, a lot of uh, really cool shops, and just beautiful um, landscaping and scenery and whatever through here. We'll take you out, uh, it goes out towards Mere Pond. Uh, the funny part is these towers out here, which used to be um, a mill, a mill right? right? This old mill district. So back in the day, uh, Ben was all about logging and the mills and things like that. And of course that uh, is long gone now, but as you can see, you'll see still thriving, uh, even during COVID, a lot of people out and about, and, uh, which is cool to see some of these businesses. They've been able to put out tents and do all kinds of things to uh, keep business going. So we'll show you around the old mill district. All right, so what do you know about Monkless Brewery? That he's not a monk. That he's not a monk. I guess that's probably why they called it called Monkless. monkless. <laughs> um, it just said that he toured through Belgium and Europe and got a taste for ales and came here and started a brewery. Yeah, and um, different. I mean, they've got that kind of uh, Belgian, they're all Belgian ales, and so uh, if you enjoy that, uh, they got a lot. We just tried a sample of, you know, the one you know, we each got one of the many that they have here, so unfortunately we'll be able to try too many, but the one I've got is pretty good. I like the one I got. What was, no, uh, I got uh, meet, Belgium, meet, Belgium. Your, meet Your Maker was yeah, mine, you got right? Meet, meet Your Maker and I got Belgian Bros. Hopefully I'm not going to meet my maker. <laughs> I'll drink Meet My Maker, but I don't want to meet my maker. <laughs> not today. Anyway, it's a pretty good beer. Cool place. It's uh, that outdoor seating that sits right on the, the chutes on Mirror Pond. Um, I think, it, is that Mirror Pond the chutes? I think, I, yeah, I I think, think it's all part of it, but... Uh, Unfortunately, the wait was an hour and a half to two hours, and uh, we're not waiting that long. <laughs> if we drank too many of these in a two hour period, we wouldn't be able to eat, so. All right, so Kim and I are playing a fun game. It's called find a place to eat when it's- <laughs> During COVID. 30 some degrees out during COVID because- It's, it's 39, which seems warm, but it's so really cold. windy. So. It's 39, feels like negative 12. <laughs> uh, that's not true. It probably is really cold though. Anyway, um, the place we just had the Monkless, that's really, their beer is really good. Um, their food was kind of odd. It's not, it not, doesn't fit our palate. Uh, and the wait was like two hours, so we're really not waiting that long. Um, so what we're going to do is, we're going to drive around, we're going to hit up basically every brewery as we go by. And what we're looking for is a tent with some heat <laughs> because it's so cold and so windy. All right, we are at Boneyard Brewing, and so far they have been awesome with service, so highly recommend this. The place. best of anything we've had yeah. so far. <laughs> we've been multiple places the past couple of days. This has been awesome. So I ordered an Irish coffee because it's cold. But one thing why, this, why the, uh, this place is so cold with the service, so we had told them that we were cold. They were going to put us at an end table that was just like... No, no heat around it. We told him we wanted to wait. This table came open right away. He came down, cleaned it, and look what's right next to us. And on top of it, he scooted the table closer so that I could get some heat. So, way to go. Yeah. And I got uh, a stout called Sojanite, which is pretty funny if anybody knows who that guy is. Uh, but anyway, yeah, service been awesome. Yum. What'd you get? I got adult grilled cheese which consists of butter, garlic, Texas toast with fried cheese curds, American cheese, and beer cheese. <laughs> and I am a cheeseaholic, so this is like totally up my alley. Yeah, baby. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday to Kim. I got tacos because the only tacos I ever eat are either my mom's tacos Kim will make tacos every once in a blue moon or it's Taco Bell tacos. So I have to try something different. So this is heaven. It is like absurdly good. It's got the, as soon as you take a bite, the beer cheese just comes squishing out. It's just, it's got chunks of the, the beer, or the deep fried cheese and wow. All right, good morning everybody from snowy. Bouncy. Bouncy, Bend, Oregon. Uh, yeah, probably not the best road to try to do our introduction on. Got some nice roads out here. Uh, we are heading to uh, just a magnificent waterfall they have out here, Benham Falls. 
And fortunately, we got about seven miles of this. Uh, checked out of Sun River today, uh, this morning. So quick weekend, so that's done. And uh, gonna go check out a few waterfalls, couple hikes, and then uh, heading on home. Showing all the people how good of a driver you are. Yeah, buddy. Knocking on a little, little bit of snow and deep roots and whatever. <laughs> Kick our way up fun. And we still have five miles to go. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> that was a good hour um, through some pretty rough snow. Luckily, Kim handled it like a champ. The truck handled it great. The tires were good. I've uh, got some brand new Michelin tires on this truck, so that's uh, some mud and snow tires, so kind of made for this. But we're not really used to driving too much in the snow, so got uh, pretty lucky with uh, the ruts and stuff weren't too bad. So we are now here at Benham Falls, uh, which is just a, a beautiful uh, waterfall area. So we'll show you some of the sights here. And then uh, when we head back out, we got to go back uh, similar to the way we came, so we don't know what that road's going to look like the remainder of the way, but it started to clear up pretty good. Right, I think uh, we're heading down. We're going. Right, right. we've so already certain. reached the summit and we're heading down, so I think it'll just, the snow will continue to disappear. All right, All right. here we go. Not going to be as easy getting down. <laughs> we're wondering why there's nobody here, because uh, in the summertime you can't even find a parking spot. Uh, but, I mean, you can't even get down these trails. It's, it's an ice rink, so <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do it. Kim, go, go show them how it's done. No way, man. <laughs> Look at I'm this. gonna die. <laughs> Just go hold on to that thing. I can't even get over there to hold on to that. Well, the water looks pretty though. All we gotta do is get down like a, a part way. Let's try to go up and see if we can see it from up here. Oh, it's pretty. It's the first time we've seen them in the winter with all the snow um, but the the main falls are still a bit up the trail and I just don't know if we're gonna be able to do it but we'll give it a shot and just see if we can make it, uh, it just it doesn't look promising it's just so icy out here right now all right so that was Benham Falls absolutely beautiful even in the winter um, maybe even more so in the winter it's because there's a bunch of snow and the water of course is just rushing as hard as it would be at any time um, hard to walk, very slippery as you can see on the video. Um, we all both almost ate it a couple different times. <laughs> and when you're holding a really expensive camera, that's uh, a little freaky. Uh, but that was my own fault. I could have backpacked it and done it that way. But anyway, I, I chanced it. Uh, safety third. Yeah. That's what I say. And it's like when both feet slide. Yeah. It's like yeah. if it's just one foot, you got one steady. The anyway, nice part was is um, it's not very many people here, of course, because you got to have four wheel drive just to even get up here. And then uh, it's so hard to walk. Um, some people are here with their dogs and stuff and what have you. Kim got, almost got attacked by a dog that stole our glove. But anyway, <laughs> back down the uh, snowy, icy road we go and off to the next adventure. All right, so next stop on the trip, we were at Dillon Falls. Haven't been here before. We've been to uh, quite a few of the waterfalls and different hikes and Bend, but have not been here. So we're looking forward to seeing what they've got here. So Dillon Falls did not disappoint. That was beautiful. Um, now the nice thing again with the other trail too is uh, just nobody out here. There's one car. Um, I was down taking some photos and Kim said she saw one couple with a dog walking by and it's crazy because uh, in our in Portland, even in the cold in the winter, you still, you can't, it's almost impossible to find parking to even go hiking. Anyway, Dillon Falls is great. And then off we go. All right, so the next stop on our adventure is Big Eddie. Um, so the one thing about Bend, if you've heard of it before, really, um, they compare it a lot to Aspen, Colorado. Uh, just, it's just an outdoor Mecca. And so 
uh, here. This is uh, the Whitewater um, Paddle Trail, and it um, it goes for miles. Looks like about four miles total, and um, I think this might be their class five rapid. It's either a four or a five, I believe. Um, so we're hoping to be able to get a good view of it. We've never been here before. Man, crazy, this is people's, this is what they do. This is their recreation. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't get to Big Eddie. It's a few mile hike and we, we're heading back to Portland today and that's, we still have, it's almost 1 p.m. and we got, you know, like a three hour drive still to get home. And we have to go winterize the trailer. So anyway, I hope we uh, did a, a pretty good job of letting you guys see and understand a little bit about what this area is like. I mean, it's our favorite by far. So if you ever get a chance to get out to Central Oregon and do any camping. Um, highly recommend it any time of the year. It's great. So many things to do. Yeah. I mean, it's just awesome. Uh, the State of Sun River, um, it was good. Uh, the, the place, the room was nice. The area is nice because you're really surrounded by a lot of stuff. Um, had some poor service, which was unfortunate, but you know, you win some, you lose some, I guess. And the um, thing about Sun River being that far south, it's not, it wasn't that busy. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was nice that we could walk around, walk around the golf course and we were right. basically by ourselves. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed uh, our adventure, and we'll see you next time. Safe travels. See ya.